spring. <laughs> we are live. We are well, live. Hello, happy okay. Sunday. How's it going, guys? Happy Sunday. Yeah, good. We've had a good week this week. There's a load, so much going on this week, and it's just, uh, it's been extraordinary, hasn't it? Yeah, I'd even say that this call is later than usual, simply on yeah. the fact that we've been had our heads down and been so busy. Oh man, I mean, it's it, it, yeah. One of our um, one of our great friends who we can't name at the moment has uh, who set up his own business uh, has said uh, you know they're going to be twelve to eighteen hour days while we go for this this period of time. And boy, is he right? I mean, I I was um, I was up until I don't know nearly midnight last night. Woke up again this morning, straight out it. Um, the designer was up until three a.m. Uh, you know, we, we are really pushing it, burning the candle at both ends. Um, but it's still it's still the yeah. good thing is that we're still laughing, though. I mean, uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, you know, you, you don't do it if you're not going to enjoy it. What's the point? Nothing better than delirious laughing after a long week. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, <laughs> really what we've we been again. doing. It's been fun, right? I mean, I've, I've been loving it. Um, we've been so busy, primarily working on our white paper, so which is such an important aspect of what is what is it that we're going to be doing here and our mission statement for Cordial, um, and also building our website and having all the graphics and everything come together. So you've got this place that you can go to, learn about Cordial, but then you've also got the documentation to back it all up. And uh, it's amazing how much time and work it takes and how many reiterations we have. Because guys, mm -hmm. what are we on? We're on uh, white paper draft well, six now. We're on version six, but actually that sort of that that number hides a whole load that that have occurred. <laughs> and there was one for our partners who were providing some seed funding. They had a separate one, uh, uh, just an earlier draft. Um, but yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, and this is only the white paper for Cordial. Huh? I mean, we we wrote so many other white papers of yeah. separate topics that all came together into. Yeah. <laughs> into well, they Cordial. were in practice. I mean, that's you know, someone was saying, look, you know, what I think it was my dad actually was commenting, you know, why has it taken you three years to to get this together? You know, you, uh, and actually, uh, I think it's it's not so much false starts. It's just learning. It's just trying to work out which avenues work. You know, what what's available, what is somebody else isn't doing. You know where the market fit lies you know what the technology is capable of doing and you have to kind of all these things have to come together and then and then i'm a great believer in fate and serendipity too so the fact that the team that we've now got we, and we can talk about that a bit more in a minute but it's all come together at the right time to deliver this most amazing service which we're so excited about yeah i think you're right and it, it we were having this conversation last year where we were like, right, what are we building, guys? Because we've got all these different ideas. Yeah. Our website at the time, you know, talked about four different areas we wanted to build. We actually spoke to investors who just said, you guys, it's too much. You're, you're thinking too big. You need to hone it mm -hmm. down. Um, and we were still in this phase of figuring it out. And it was actually when we did our grant application, the Cordial was the one that was just like stuck out to the person marking, marking mm -hmm. it. And that kind of just clarified to us. And we'd said this whole time, we know that human knowledge as a service which we can talk about as well uh, yeah. is the big thing and actually um it's uh it's coming together now we've got some amazing minds and the last three years for me have been a massive trust building exercise because you want to be with people and you want to be exploring ventures with people you can trust and actually mm. the time in which we've gone especially in a bear market where we've been consistently tested you know from orchard's perspective we had to cover our supernode costs for months at a time we've um, you know lost a lot of money in believing in the vision and suddenly now everything's really starting to pick up and whilst everything picks up and there's opportunities to raise money there's opportunities to build out visions we've also got this great group of chemistry between us all within mm. not just within orchard creative but within the oh. whole community and that's yeah, why exactly. it's so good it's it's, it's like a family in many ways isn't it yeah I, I love being a part of our community and yeah. uh, the wider community within elastos it, it's just so much fun yeah um, and also all the trials and tribulations of the years you know there are people who who you can see have had a really depressed period of time you know we've probably all been there quite frankly and there yeah. are others that have thrown their Teddy out of the cot and just stormed off, sold all of their ELA. There's a few of those who are back in, by the way, the community now. Um, yeah. And there's others that just went dormant. You know, they just sort of slept through the bear market, which actually is probably not a bad thing to do if you can just park it all and just, you know, let it go. But anyway, yeah. um, Jochen, why don't you talk to us about the change in name? You know, we've gone from HCCAS uh, to KCAS. So, you know, tell us what's going on there. 
So, so we started off with human consensus as a service, which I find fascinating. And then, you know, um, we, we got another advice from board, uh, George, and we've introduced them in the last call, him in the last call. And um, he's brilliant, right? Background in AI, knows everything about democ democracy, knows a lot about consensus. And he says, wait a minute, what we're actually doing is we're building a framework for, for knowledge. Um, uh, easy access to knowledge, easy access to, to experts, easy access to people that can generate the knowledge that you need. And, and at the end, um, we all can benefit from that knowledge. Um, and that was a really interesting insight. So I think that HKAS, um, it, it sounds a little bit like the Dutch words uh, cheese, yeah, which is the, the, the least positive part of the name. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but it, HKAS does for everyone loves the, cheese. The knowledge is so awesome. Well, yeah. don't worry, Joachim, the, the number of people that actually speak Dutch is very small. <laughs> <laughs> You're totally irrelevant. I'm totally aware of it. And um, actually, yeah. it must be across that whole kind of uh, Saxon um, language, because Kaza in German is cheese as well, isn't it? I'm sure. Yeah, it, it's something like that. Um, well, how do you say it in Dutch? Gas. Oh, okay. Oh, right. It's now, I mean, that's our, that's the protocol, basically, <laughs> isn't it? So human consensus, uh, human knowledge as a service is the protocol. So we want to be the globally accepted protocol for human knowledge as a service. And and I think it's a good move. Um, you know, we had a debate about it, you know, didn't we? And, and Sash, in the end, I think we left it up to you because you'd come up with the original uh, c consensus as a service and we said well you know we're all pretty relaxed about it what do you think um and then well, we for it. yeah why not i mean it makes complete sense and how george put it is that knowledge sits above consensus yeah, yeah. and in acquiring knowledge you can then collectively have people come together to create consensus so it's we're still using the yeah. same kind of framework it's just that we're going yeah. slightly above it but it was but yeah also, it's it's not the working title of the project anymore. For a long time, it was the name that we gave everything. And actually, it, it was never going to be something that you could, you know, it doesn't trip off the tongue particularly well. <laughs> no, no, Cordial, Cordial works really nicely. Yeah. I love the name. And, uh, well, there's so many good plays on it now as well with the Cordial Network, the Cordial, you know, Cordial World and Cordial Exchange. Um, you know, there's Cordial there, AI. Yeah, exactly. So, so we're going to have, you know, a, a, quite a lot of that going on. Um, what else have we got going on? Oh yeah, new person, so uh, or new people in our team. So our team is uh, well, it's us three that started it, kind of this this particular project. Um, we've got George on board pretty quickly because he said, "Look, you know, I don't just want to be an advisor sitting on the sidelines. I want to come in and do more with you. I want to be involved." Um, and all throughout Orchard's um, journey, we've been connected to a guy called Adam Waters, who um, is a really good creative social media expert. Uh, and he runs um, a, an agency called BFBS Creative. Um, yeah. But Adam, you, just so we go back to it. Where, oh, yeah, he's the, he's the author of this book as well. So, I mean, he, he knows what he's talking about. And we know how important marketing is to, to the success of a project. Well, and actually, don't he's not... It. He's not the media guy or the social media guy or the marketing guy or anything. Uh, you know, we're all going to have our sleeves rolled up, but he will be able to bring a level of expertise that we need and contacts in that space as well. So, you know, stand by for his storytelling and, and narrative writing because it'll be good. Yeah, yeah, he's he's really good. And what I like about it is that we, we are all blockchain people, right? And, and we've been in the crypto space for a while. So... Um, we kind of tend to think that we understand the, the, the crypto game to some extent. I mean, uh, we know how important it is to really value the community, but the crypto community is a different community than anything else. Well, we target for a very big part of what um, Cordial really is and what we need to do. We target um, non-crypto people and non-crypto businesses and mm. government and NGOs, and um, they all will need our services. So what I love about human consensus as a service is that it's applicable in any vertical, in any industry. Um, so we will be able to make a difference literally everywhere. Um, but uh, for in order to, to reach these kind of very different target groups, you need a CMO that also understand, uh, understands the, how to reach those audiences because that's where the real yeah, um, difference will be made, I think. Yeah, well, uh, you know, in, in writing the white paper, we have done all sorts of work. We've got... We've been using Miro board to create uh, mind maps. We've got um, 
customer profiling and personas that are being written. You know, we've looked at the tokenomics. Uh, we've looked at all the different use cases. Um, and, and in fact, we've had to thin out the white paper because, I mean, it's about, um, well, it's nearly 30 pages long, which is kind of average for a white paper, unless you're looking at the Bitcoin one, which is a bit th thinner. But, um, but actually, you know, we've got to describe a business and how you would access that. Um, but we've got so much, so, you know, there are so many leads that we can take. But the good news is we're going to start, well, we're going to release it to our closest community um, uh, tomorrow, today. I mean, it's, well, when are we going to do it? Uh, tomorrow, I guess. It depends when you're watching this, doesn't it? <laughs> well, by the time you watch this, the website yeah. and white paper will be live. And the, we're going to do this in stages and that obviously, first of all, we're opening it up to our close friends and family and then the community within Elastos. Um, and we want to get your guys' feedback. We want to hear what your thoughts are. Um, and then we're working with an incubator in the sense that we're building up to the next stage in which we're going to be releasing it more publicly. But right now, we're just gearing up slowly. Within the next two months, I think you're going to see us ramping this up. But right oh, now, if you haven't um, seen this in the next two months, we've done something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, completely. But, um, yeah. So, guys, go check it out. Go. It will be up now whilst you're watching this. Yeah, uh, it's cool. Well, the website is live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Website up and live as far as updated because the last week has been hidden behind public view but all these tweets going on and things that haven't been live and now it's all live so check we've got, we got to thank you for that hard work sash because <laughs> um because you know although uh, our designer ben has been brilliant actually and working very hard to um to ensure that it, it's a it's a holistic brand that isn't just a one icon and a name but also everything that he's designed with us actually we'll we'll just run through everything we produce so you'll see it in the white paper you'll see it in the light paper you can see it in the website and actually as we build the applications that brand and that identity will just flow through so yeah it's pretty i mean we're we're pumped about it actually so yeah cordial nice. world um and it's only nice. going to get better as well so if you like it now you know it's going to be better in in a month or two and then it's going to be better after that and and we'll just keep you know we just want to keep delivering so go and sign up and be if you're interested in what we're doing then then sign up yeah we've got so um, think, uh, we've got, there, we've got email. Be, sorry Josh, I, I took up into this because i'm wondering how many of our, our viewers actually know what what cordial is at the moment and, and maybe we should just very briefly explain um, what it is, and then maybe do a quick round uh, amongst the three of us to hear, you know, what the top two things are that we are most excited about. Um, uh, would it be a, a good exercise to do quickly? Because I, yeah. I'm not yeah. Yeah. sure if everyone knows. Uh, so, Chris, Chris, can you explain it in um, under right. one minute? Yeah, I'm going to do it in six words. Where the world shares knowledge fairly. So, I mean, it's it's a bit of a of a light statement, I guess, but there's a lot in there. So, you know, we bought we we want to build a cordial because we understand that everybody is an expert in something, even if it's just where they live or a perspective that they have uh, or, you know, some particular experience, life experience or they're living in a particular time. You know, it could be World War Two or they had experience of that or it could be the fact that they you know lived in a particular country during some political turmoil or something. They're an expert in their own lived experience. So they they have something and knowledge that other people may well want. Um, and at the moment, if you try and share knowledge, you either do it for free and you suffer the same um, uh data double spend problem as you do with with money because everybody can copy it um uh, or you uh you try and sell it um which most of the time goes to a middleman and they take out an enormous chunk of it a bit like you would find in any creative industry um but yeah we think that you, with disintermediation attaching that digital identity to the individual and the knowledge itself we can build a marketplace of ideas a marketplace of insight a marketplace of knowledge that is really fair to those who are creating it and those who are seeking it. And we want to join them up and make sure that the values that they're creating, the value, the wealth that they're going to create uh, is, is shared as, as equitably as possible. There we are. That's probably over a minute. Okay. <laughs> I love it. Thanks. How about you, Seth? Um, yeah, that was a great explanation there, Chris. Uh, so for me, it's the world's knowledge marketplace that we're building. 
So it's a Web3 marketplace where anyone can share knowledge with each other. Now, knowledge is a very broad subject and we want it to be broad and we want to be as agnostic as possible to all different industries and enable them to connect into our network to connect, basically use AI through a knowledge graph to basically connect people together in an efficient manner. Um, if you look back in time, we sat around stone fires in the stone ages. We then go to ancient Greek and we had these assemblies which we'd get together. Um, there's the legendary Knights of the Round Table to things like board of directors and assemblies that you see today. And um, we, we, by nature, want to connect with each other. We want to communicate and learn things. And we uh, seek every day for knowledge to understand how to do certain things and to mm -hmm. progress in our own careers. We have this epic meaning and calling within ourselves. But the problem is, is that we're right now doing all in a Web2 environment. And the Web2 environment is where, yeah, we can use it for free and we can connect with each other. But yeah. the, the actual ac acquiring of knowledge is going on by a third party and it's being sold as a kind of on a secondary market hidden from us. So we're busy loving the internet, doing our thing. But the problem is, is that someone else is then just taking that and making money from it. When really, let's put the digital tools in our hands as individuals. Let's get digital identities in everyone's hands and give them the ability to build data treasure troves, which are their own. So the more that they share knowledge, the more that they use the Web3 platforms, the more that they start to swell up as far as the amount of data that they hold under their name and then the more that they can leverage that for great things and it's almost their reputation the more data that you build in yourself so we want to build this marketplace where every individual is empowered to build up their own data to help others and then to basically build wealth from interacting and sharing knowledge brilliant that, yeah that is very well put that's that's absolutely uh, awesomely put, Sash. I, I just got a very small tweak to add because I really like businesses and I like business models. Mm. And one of the things that any business need is is insights, right? You want to have insights yeah. in, in in people. What do they think? What do, what do they feel? What is their opinion about things? And it doesn't really matter in which stage you are as a business, if you're launching a new product or you just want to test your reputation or whatever kind of insight you need, you want to have easy access to those insights. Um, and from a business perspective, uh, this is very interesting because if you've got an easy access to insights, um, namely you, you ask a question, uh, the AI filters out the right people, and that those people um, give you the feedback that you need on whatever topic you mm. know you're talking about, um, and you pay them for that. That is super valuable. And the moment you you can do that in a in a seamless way, um, yeah, that, that makes the world a better place for businesses, for governments, for for politicians even. Um, and then on top of that, what you just explained, Sash. Uh, let's say that I've got a question, but I don't have the money to pay for it. If I still find people to um, to answer my questions, and that that knowledge, that new knowledge, goes into a data source, and everyone who contributed to that knowledge will get paid forever from that knowledge, from those insights. Yeah, that's a concept that is, I, I would say, it's unbeatable. I love it. It's pretty yeah. amazing, isn't it? If you if you saw a question being asked and you saw there's no fee to it. But if you respond, you'll own a percentage of the overall ticket being being asked. Uh, and then that gets put into a data trust or taken to a secondary market. And the smart contracts initiate uh, pay out directly to your DIDs and wallets to dress in microtransactions. You open up the idea of streaming money to your account over time. Yeah. And suddenly you want to now participate and start helping. And the better jobs you do, the more reputation you get, which then it's almost like a positively reinforcing feedback yeah. loop where it's actually everyone's benefiting. And from our side, we want to gamify it loads and make it, you know, all these yeah. kind of rewards that you get. And in a Web2 environment, when you gamify, it's not, I think it's a malicious thing because you're trying to get people hooked to algorithms, which you can then take data and take money from. But in this kind of open source Web3 environment, when you gamify to make almost addictive, you're doing it in a way which benefits the individual because they're now able to build up their own personal wealth. So yeah. it's, um, yeah, I'm so excited. And if I was to say the, one of the most things, the biggest things I'm excited about here is AI. Um, I've for years known and, read about how if you're not including AI into your business model, it's going to come after you at some point because it's mm. going to seep into every corner of society. Yeah. And here what we're really building is an AI engine which can connect digital identity, self-sovereign digital identities together, but then provide a, a kind of a workflow that they go through that is really productive. It can help both the individuals and the knowledge provider, a knowledge seeker and knowledge provider, and everyone wins in it. So um, it's using AI for good, and, I, and don't forget that you know. Don't forget, Sash, that we've also one of the revenue streams is also the ability to 
uh, of those who have created the knowledge to sell that knowledge in order to train AI better. Because, yeah. you know, through what we're going to do, you'll have an infinite number of data sets, you know, amazing. And actually, you know, we know that there's a, a bias in AI at the moment, but just because, you know, historically how it was built, who built it, how it was coded, all that sort of stuff. So the greater the number of data sets with the greatest level of diversity can actually do something beneficial for AI in general. So, yeah, we think that we'll be able to start using it uh, for that purpose as well. And the people who create the data are going to get a reward for it. So, you know, it, that's that's what we're trying to build in anyway. In fact, I rewrote the um, the va the vision statement, um, and one of the things that Adam picked up actually was that when we'd written our mission, it was sort of a bit of the same as the vision. So, if we think longer term about the vision, here's one sentence that you'll be able to find in the in the white paper and on the website. But I think it's empowering everyone everywhere to create wealth from their knowledge and their reputation. So, you know, empowering everyone everywhere to create wealth from their knowledge and reputation. You know, when you love, think about it, that's amazing. Love, yeah, and, and today, someone can be really empowered and you're seeing that as we go into more of a gig economy and you're seeing YouTube stars, all these individuals who are able to basically use their own reputation to build mm. a following and then turn that into money. The problem is, is that that can be taken away from them at any point. Like you see people getting banned, shadow banned, and the, the actual platforms themselves aren't in their control mm. as you know, because they don't have a login. They've got loads of different logins, but we want to say the whole one universal login owned by you. you no one can take that away. Like your blockchain wallet that you have for Bitcoin or whatever, or ELA, you, someone can't just take that from you. And the same goes with your digital identity. And with that now you can build up your reputation and, and then you can leverage that in a really positive way so um and it gives yeah. everyone equal opportunity anywhere in the world yeah exactly and you know you may well be a, a wise person uh sitting in you know a, a i don't know the the outback of australia or um you know a, a desert in, in northern africa or somewhere and yet your experience and your wisdom could be sought after it you know from people who currently wouldn't even think about contacting you but you, as that individual, could build a reputation in that in that space uh, for delivering that wisdom in some way. I mean, it's just an example. There are just mi millions of examples. I mean, goodness me, we've I think we've written about seven or eight different use cases in the in the white paper, which just to give people a flavour of where you can go with this. But um, it's great. I love it. Okay, so for the sake of time, we said yeah. we were going to try not go too long on this one. We said half an hour. <laughs> I think the last one was an hour. From the community spec perspective, listening to this, do you like shorter versions? Do you want us to try and make them half an hour every Sunday? Or do you like these kind of just free flowing long conversations that might go to an hour above? But um, let us know in the comments and we, we really need that feedback actually ourselves because yeah. we don't want to bore you. <laughs> but we also, oh, we want to give you something. Like you were saying, Joachim, you know, people need insight, you know, in order to evaluate how you're doing you know your performance people need feedback so yeah it's a great question Sam. but quickly before we wrap up um we had the ask me anything with clubhouse the other day which was huge you know it was a massive bonus always positive i think going back to what george says um you know cyber republic to him is cybernetics republic the importance of communication when mm. you communicate you live and things start to open up and it's true and that, you know, these conversations we have at the clubhouses, there can be disagreements. I still see positives in that regardless. But um, nonetheless, everyone's being informed about updates and what's going on. And that's a huge bonus. So we learned that the Yaping has coded and the ELA deflationary model has been done. Um, so that's going to take effect probably around June. We haven't been given the exact block time, or at least I don't mm -hmm. know on the top of my head. But that that's probably looking at June where we're going to see initial issuance drop. But then coming December, we're going to see our first halving. But that's coded and it's happening, guys. So we are officially deflationary and we're going to, there is only going to be 28 million, 0.2 million ELA, and that's going to be by 2105. So really exciting there to learn. Um, the, what else have we got? We had um, DID2 is coming along really well. That's going to be implemented soon. Um, and then the, Ethereum sidechain has also been coded and upgraded. Uh, and from the team's perspective, um, that's ready. Uh, mm -hmm. So the next step that was talked about is having an audit done, um, which I believe was spoken about with Clarence to look into and start kind of talking with the foundation about costs and what needs to be done there. But 
uh, from my perspective, I think it's really important that the audit gets done so that you can basically go do BD and business development, talk to different teams and say, come and build on our smart chain. It's super cheap. It's super reliable. Here's the audit papers mm -hmm. um, and look at our other features as well. We've got Bitcoin's hash power. We've got the DIDs and Carrier and Hive and it just the audit, though, cements it all together. So that's really, really positive to see there. Um, and did I miss anything else? I think besides that it was it was general i mean it was a two hour technical ask me anything update and i think by the end i was i was flagging you did very well sash you did very well um uh no that's great i think um i think um i think it is important to have them and uh, and it's always great to see uh, members of those long standing teams come up and and be transparent and talk to the community so um yeah it was another another good um another good opportunity for everyone to engage and learn more about what's going on okay well i think we'll probably um uh, call it a day there um and uh and yeah please go as as both of um the other guys have said please go and have a look at cordial.world take a look at the website uh download the um uh, the white paper and uh, let us know what what you think um, because we're really excited and we'd love to bring you on the journey as well and, and listening to what you have to say. Yeah, we, we were saying how one of the things we need to build Cordial for is in a way in which we can mine knowledge ourselves as we go, because yeah. that will then help yeah. direct us and navigate in the correct direction. And certainly um, the community and the spirit that we have within is, is so valuable to us. So please do give us criticism, feedback, whatever it is, let us know. If you see anything on the website that's not looking right, it's not aligning, that's fine. Just drop us a message. And um, likewise, in the white paper, scrutinize it. And actually, there's a, there's going to be a surprise in the website somewhere. So we're going to gamify it. And uh, there's going to be some red packets we're going to put in it. It's not there yet, but I'll let you guys know. And then um, we're talking oh, about it here first. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a little heads up for the community. But we're also going to obviously be going down some form of crowdfunding route. And in that, we can probably put a couple spaces of surprises in there for that too so yeah. um yeah there's a couple of clues around there already you can try and find but yeah scrutinize it guys and let us know your thoughts and don't forget to like and subscribe and yeah let us know what you're thinking and so yeah next week i think what we will be able to talk about is fundraising and how we're going to do it and some dates yep. for that i think yeah sounds yeah. good I'm hoping we'll, we'll get some more cred in news as well that's coming yes. end yeah. of the month um so we're looking forward to hearing some more on that uh, and apart from that, we grind on as the Elastus community and keep building. I mean, the building never stops as far as development wise. So it's very, very exciting. Yeah, fantastic. OK, well, have a great Sunday evening, guys. And um, and for those who are watching, I hope you're also having a good day or evening, too. Great, guys. Right. Have a great Cheers, Sunday. Guys. See you later. Bye. 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 Bye.